So we have Qualcomm here at uh, Mobile World Congress. What are you showing? So one of the things that we're showing is that we actually do a lot of optimizations onto the stock Android system before we make those releases to uh, customers, our OEMs, so that they can actually deliver the best uh, HTML5 experience on their devices. And so this includes both performance optimizations as well as features that are on the desktop to bring a desktop level uh, experience into both smartphones and tablets. So, are you basically helping your, uh, the, the makers using your chip to make devices that are as, as fast as a laptop? Essentially, desktop. exactly. I mean, we're putting so much innovation in the different functional blocks of Snapdragon, right? The CPU, the GPU, DSPs, the modem. What we want to make sure is that you don't get vanilla Android on it, vanilla Windows Phone. We want to get an optimized system so you, so you get uh, French vanilla, maybe, if that's the right way to say it, right? Or chocolate chip. So, a good example of this is um, are a few demos that I could show you here. Um, these are all standard uh, web pages, right? Very uh, public web pages. And in this case, we're showing GUI Mark III. GUI Mark III is a, a pretty heavyweight HTML5 canvas uh, benchmark. You can see here you're getting 20 frames per second. Here you're getting uh, significantly higher um, frames per second, about 30, 35. Maybe most importantly is what you look at is the, 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 the benchmark running is very, very jerky on this over here, whereas it's very, very smooth over here. Similarly, so this, does that mean that the browser is never going to slow down on your chip? Or what does it mean? Well, what it means is that as, as uses a web page, downloads a web page, you're going to have smooth animations, you're going to have smooth CSS transforms when things are rotating, and you just get a faster page download overall. Is it as fast as a netbook, as fast as an Intel laptop? Um, in most, most of the, for our high-end Snapdragon, the S4 products, you're going to get performance that are as good as netbooks, if not better. Right? So consumers are never going to think, ah, oh, it's just you know, Consumers are always going to think some sites are too slow, but uh, the whole goal is to bring the same level of desktop experience into all the mobile devices, not just even the tablet, but also uh, smartphones over using 3G and 4G networks. So it's mostly the web browser? So uh, we're, there's a variety of things that we're doing to make Snapdragon better. It's not just the web browser. So for example, we have over here the, the capability, uh, what we're demonstrating here is the capability of multi-channel audio. And the fact that you have with, with uh, dual mics on many of the smartphones and tablets uh, out there today, but then you can actually leverage that to do a lot of echo cancellation and have a much clearer voice signal. What we've done here is a, a, a game to actually showcase that, right? We'll, we'll just start that here. And so what it is is there's a player one on uh, supposed to be standing on this side, player two over this side. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I guessed the song, right? There's, there's a song playing. I got it. I got it. I won. No? Or maybe you you try it. Got it. Oh, I, I spoke too loudly. Well, it's player. So it shows you that player two got it. Essentially, uh, my colleague over here. Yeah, because he's standing on this side. And so using the dual mic technology um, that's built into the Snapdragon's capabilities, you can actually now not only do have clearer voice, but you can have innovative games and applications. So you can do constant noise cancellation. Exactly. Constantly. Exactly. So and only picking up what? Commands or filter for filter for things like voices, uh, and, and that's typically what people want. So you you could do a, a voice recognition without pushing a button to start the voice recognition. You could you could if you could, for example in a car, if somebody the driver is always sitting on one side. You could actually program the app to, or the default scenario to be that exactly. Right. So just. Is a browser open source? How can you, or do you work closely with Google? How can you get in there and get it accelerated? Right. So the browser, the, the components for the browser, WebKit, the JavaScript engine, the HTTP stack, these are all components that are provided in source. So we modify them to take advantage of the, the hardware's capabilities. So for example, on JavaScript, we make sure it really is tuned for the CPU core inside of Snapdragon. For WebGL and graphics, so like what we're showing over here, we make sure, this is WebGL in the Android browser, and this is part of our standard releases, we make sure that it's tuned for, the, in this case, the GPU itself. So there's actually, you know, some things you want to run on the CPU, some things on the GPU, frankly, some things even on the in embedded DSP that's inside of Snapdragon, like audio decodes.
So, so do you go and change the source code of the browser? So we actually change the source code of the browser, and it's not that we're shipping a standalone browser, but it's more a optimized browser to the OEMs uh, that develop with Snapdragon, so that they can then ship it on to, to the final product. So the latest uh, the newest, uh, browser is Chrome, right? Android. Yes. Do you yeah. have access to accelerate that yet? Uh, right now, they haven't open sourced all the uh, the components of that, much of that. But yet, uh, but when they do, then we, we have that opportunity to, to do the same. The basic Android browser has always been open source. The basic Android browser has always been open source, and we have the ability to accelerate that. Interestingly, Chrome, the browser, as well as the Android browser, share a lot of already a lot of common components. WebKit, the V8 JavaScript engine, as well as the the networking stack, the HTTP networking stack. So it's really around the security and the rendering model that things are different. So when that, so those are the the big differences. So in some sense, a lot of the optimizations I'm showing you here all apply to Chrome. Once Chrome from our Android is open source, um, us or Chrome, the Chrome team can actually bring that to market very easily. How long time does it take? Well, for us to bring it to market, will likely be within uh, gated around an Android release. Obviously, um, when the Chrome team is going to release it is unknown, right? They've upstreamed some of the code, but not not everything. So, do you think they're going to be uh, crate-powered laptops? Uh, well, uh, we definitely are working whether it's on Android, but or Windows Mo Windows Phone, as well as Windows 8, very closely on all different form factors. And then one of the things we announced at the show was the Snapdragon S4 Pro. And the, the Pro is going to be used in a variety of device, de devices, but it's really focused on a compute-centric part. So Windows 8, for example, will be available on uh, Snapdragon S4, the 8960 product. But with uh, Snapdragon S4 Pro, it's the same same uh, other co components uh, as the S4, but it also has an even higher-end GPU, a PC-class uh, graphics processing unit in the Adreno 320. And so that is definitely a uh, netbook, laptop, call it what you want, uh, class compute uh, processor uh, that will be used for very, very um, interesting, unique Windows 8 devices. That comes later. That comes, that comes a little bit later. The, the initial Windows 8 devices will likely be on Snapdragon S4 and then the S4 Pro uh, later. How about Chromebooks? Sorry? Google Chromebooks. Chromebooks. Uh, we are t uh, currently, we've worked with Google uh, in the past on Chrome OS, but obviously they, they launched the first Chromebook on the x86 architecture. Um, as they make changes and, and, and plans to also add ARM, uh, you will surely see us and others uh, want to participate. But they've not made that any public statements towards that. And if you dock your smartphone to a TV or to a monitor, basically yep. you have a desktop, right? Yeah, exactly. Especially, um, well, you have a desktop, number one, but um, but you also have, um, you know, these different use cases where you actually have, for example, your smartphone, and you it's in your pocket where you're, it's, a, it's mostly a consumption device, and then you actually, when you dock it, it becomes some kind of a creative device, and, and where you can create content. And so that day is definitely almost here. I mean, we've seen with Motorola and the innovations they've had in WebTop that uh, OEMs are already expect, are experimenting in this area. I uh, definitely think that that's going to be more and more the case, especially because the pocket is actually a very important thing for a lot of people, and to have the, that computing power in your pocket is very, very critical. For that to be awesome, you also need uh, uh, HTML5 offline features and all that. Is Qualcomm contributing to HTML5 spec to make it better to... Uh, Abs absolutely. So I can, I can show you uh, an example of that. So a lot of what I showed you before is really around making HTML5 uh, faster, whether on Canvas or WebGL or or bringing in capabilities. But over here, what I have a picture, uh, what I have a, a demo of, and this is again the Snapdragon S4, right? Is right in the browser what we've what we've enabled, and this is a sample web page. But what you're looking at is HTML and JavaScript. But unlike using uh, a feature like media capture, this is camera access right in the browser. So this is not a native camera application on Android. This is a camera access really the equivalent of HTML5 camera uh, right in the browser. So let me, uh, taking a picture is obviously easy fully to do. Hardware accelerated. It's fully not, it's fully not, hardware accelerated. It's just slower than the other camera. No. Nope. Look at uh, when I pan and zoom, one of the things I can do, I can, uh, I can uh, solarize, right? All the features that a native camera application has is now, all, now also available to both an HTML5 web application as well as uh, web pages, right? Even, for example, a web page like 
uh, Craigslist or these these uh, these posting sites, why have to leave the web, why should you have to leave the web page to take a picture and upload that picture? So this this what we've done is uh, is upload video as well. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So um, this is a, a spec called a HTML5 device API spec, and so we've implemented that spec and. Uh, we're planning to hopefully, you know, contribute more into things that are device and mobile centric uh, into the specs, whether it's around sensors, location, camera, uh, audio, etc. Can you do that quickly, or does it have to take a long time? So, you know, with with, with some of the specs of uh, W3C or or etc., the specs are what ratify uh, after an implementation's out there. What you're looking at here. HTML5 camera um, functionality. Um, this functionality you actually have. I mean, this is pretty amazing, right? This functionality, I can go to negative. See, or maybe I'll, I'll turn it off so you can actually see the difference there. This functionality we're, we're going to make available in our Android 4.0 releases and have been making available so that even before the spec, developers can already access this um, and be able to start deploying with this. So it actually helps drive the spec. You can actually find out more information on that at developer.qualcom.com.